Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 10 of Sports Betting Conversations. The title of today's episode is Using Technology and Content to Unlock Customer Value Through Sports Betting. Today, we are very happy to be joined by Harry Von Baer, Managing Director and U.S. CEO at Spotlight Sports Group. And as always, I'm joined by Kevin Twitchell, Advisor at Data Art. Harry, thank you very much for joining us here today. Uh, you know, please tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got where you are uh, currently. Yeah, of course. Pleasure to be here. Um, so I, I'm the managing director of the sports division at uh, Spotlight Sports Group. So what that means in practical terms is that I'm responsible for our, our strategy, our P&L performance and all the operations for everything that we do in the sports betting and fantasy space. And that includes acting as our US CEO. Um, I've been with Spotlight Sports Group for five years and uh, initially joining to oversee our, our M&A and our business development activities and took on the role as uh, MD uh, a couple of years back. Um, it's my first role in the sports betting industry prior to joining Spotlight. I was a consultant focusing on uh, private equity and growth strategy for businesses uh, here in London. So I've, I've always loved sports, um, so it was impossible to ignore the uh, opportunity to move into the industry when offered the chance five years back. Yeah, yeah, excellent. And uh, yeah, to tell us a little, a little about SSG, it seems like a pretty interesting company with pr pretty broad reach. So, you know, we'd love to learn learn more about it. Yeah, of course. Um, it, it's a it's a really unique business. SSG uh, as an entity has been operating for over thirty five years now. Uh, we started as the Racing Post newspaper um, back in the late 80s uh, in, in, in the UK and Ireland, and that, that still exists and remains the only daily sports betting and racing publication uh, in the country. But over the last decade, it's been a really exciting uh, evolution and, and transformation. The business now um, has evolved into a, a global a digital sports betting content and technology provider. So we operate multiple websites and apps, including the Racing Post uh, website and app here in the UK, and then also um, Pixwise in the US, which focuses on uh, US sports betting content and data. Um, and uh, we also have a significant B2B division providing betting content and affiliate technology to sports books and publishers. And we, we work with a right, wide range of uh, media organizations in, in the States. Interesting. And, and in terms of uh, affiliates, do you, do you provide platform or do you have uh, companies un under you, under SSG that actually act as affiliates? Both. So we we have our own um, affiliate brand. So I, I mentioned uh, publishers like Racing Post, which we own, and, and we also operate as a super affiliate here in the UK through that. So working with all the sports books to provide them with um, customers uh and and we also uh, we own a number of um, brands in other territories i mentioned pixwise in the us but we also provide a suite of um, products and tools that publishers can use to become affiliates in their own right so we have the expertise in how to create um create products and create content that drives users to sign up with sports books and also to you know, to bet and therefore become more valuable to the sports books themselves. So we use that on our own um, our own sites and then also work with media publishers to, to use them on their sites as well. Yeah, interesting. And uh, uh, how has the uh, transition been to uh, the United States market? I mean, they're, they're you know, ever since PASPA was repealed here, you know, obviously, um, you know, a large influx of European uh traditional European-based companies making their move to the U.S. Um, and as I think everybody knows, there's a, many differences. Um, how has that, that been for you? It's, it's been really interesting. It's, it's been a great uh, learning experience seeing a market like the U.S., which has gone from you know, zero to 100 in a few years versus um, our, our kind of legacy, our core business here in Europe, which has grown and evolved as you know the internet has ha happened, um, and then three G has occurred, and smartphones. So you've right. seen the the kind of the the burst of um, kind of growth and new technologies over such a small period of time has led to a lot of different 
different routes that um, businesses have taken. I think what we've looked to do is blend our expertise that we have in the European market in terms of uh, you know affiliate technology content that that drives engagement and drives um, betters uh, and, and also how to build sort of business models around that. But then um, we we've recruited you know a large team in the states and we've also bought um, a business in the States Alarm Sports Network out there uh, 12 months ago to really make sure that we have a significant team on the ground who understand the intricacies of the US market um, in terms of in terms of the sports, in terms of the state rollout, have relationships with the, the relevant um, you know, parties locally. So yeah, it's, it's, it's been great to be part of. Um, I've learned a lot. I certainly didn't go into it thinking that it would be um, easy for Europeans to come over and sort of impart uh, how sports betting works to the works to the US market. And, and uh, luckily, you know, I think pe- people who have come over open minded um, have have been more successful than those who have, have tried to do the former. Yeah. 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 Kevin, I know you're itching up a bit. You yeah, you a, know, it's, it's funny. It's been around 30, 35 years, you know, and I probably in the US, Pickwise is the first brand that a lot of us got to know your company. You know, obviously we've read you. It's kind of similar with Data Art's been around 25 years, and our big venture into sports betting was working with Betfair, you know, the, the technology partner that, you know, we were for them for over 10 years, I think, Russell. So now when you moved and you launched Pickwise, what are some of the challenges really from a technology point of view with all the regulations, keeping up with real-time data and, and, and really an area I, I know you talk a lot about is content. Like how do you make Pickwise a rich content um, platform for 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 the u.s market yeah well we, we've what we haven't tried to do is say this um content works in the uk therefore let's go and replicate it in the u.s it's, it's very much localized we have a you know a significant team of u.s content creators uh, on, on the ground in the states who are doing that i think from a from a technology point of view what we do understand is how people engage with content and what therefore then drives them to to sign up to a new account or to you know to bet more and how we can reduce the friction between someone going and reading the you know the the preview of uh, of, of yesterday's game um, versus versus sort of seeing that realizing that it creates a betting opportunity making that as seamless as possible from our products through to um through to the sports book and and kind of the the more we can reduce the friction within that journey the better it is for our users the better it is for us and the better it is for our for our customers in in the sports books so there's there's certainly been technology um kind of experience that we've been able to to take over from our from our legacy uh uk business um, but on the content side, it's very much you know, learning what works. It's a completely different um, media consumption yeah. experience in, in, in the States versus the UK. Um, and then there's some, there's some technology that we, that we operate in Europe, which, which we can't in the States, given the regulatory environment as well. We have on the Racing Post on our app, we have seven bookmakers um, that are directly integrated into the app and therefore... People can come. They can read the read the picks. They can study the form, the race card, um, decide they like to bet on a specific horse and see it's a better better odds with one bookmaker than another, and then bet directly through our app. And that takes a lot of deep back end technology work and engineering. We love to do that in the states, but at the moment, given the uh, the regulation around the Wire Act and various licensing requirements, it's not something that that we've been able to do. Um, so yeah, it's, it's it's, it's taking across some of the, the work that has been done by our tech teams here and, um, you know, maximizing the opportunities that that brings, but also understanding what can't be done. Um, but were things to change, then we, we, we've got the understanding and have done the work that we could supplement it into the States. Yeah, yeah. How are you guys looking at like a market like now that we just have new states coming on? Like when you look at California, you know, for a market, yeah, how how are you going to approach that? You know, with all the different elements that could come in with that market, it's almost like a country. 
Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. Well, I, th I think every new state is like a country and a new opportunity. Uh, it's just, yeah, with a, with a California or a Florida or, a, you know, Texas, they are such large states that they are, it's not, you know, it's almost a continent rather than a country. Um, so I think making sure that we, we're doing the work now, um, that, that we're ready for it, both in terms of, are we creating the right sort of content that California, um, you know, potential California betters would want and, and, do, and lay the foundations now for when the state comes live. But also when we think about our, um, our, our partnerships with, with media companies, if they have significant Californian audiences, are there things that we can do for them and, and serve them that, that are, are useful now, but then particularly useful when sports betting comes live. So what we've seen with a lot of our, our customers is because we have such a strong fantasy sports offering, both season long and daily, that we, we can create content and tools for customers where DFS is legal and it can get people you know, engaged and they can start to capture user data and understand what they want. And then when sports betting comes live, it gives them an opportunity to target a you know, pre-qualified audience rather than waiting until um, betting is live and sort of uh, taking a running jump on day one. Yeah. And, uh, you know, localization is something that we, we hear, you know, pretty consistently, you know, I mean, almost everyone we, we've spoken with on this topic has, has mentioned localization. Uh, and California, you know, being the size that they are, you, you might have to even get hyper localized there, right, depending on, you know, Bay Area versus Southern California. Um, so it's uh, going to be quite an interesting uh, uh, initiative when when that state you know goes online. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think I mean coming back to one of the points around um, you know what what tech, how do we think about technology and content? I think some things you can create that are scalable and you can use across multiple areas, like a lot of the kind of you know the back end and the the tech and also the from a front end product perspective there's a lot of similarities but but it, it tends to be more on the content side where we look to um you know localize it content and marketing as well um are, are there are there different things that we can can write or produce or are there different tactics from a marketing perspective that resonate in in one state or yeah if, if it's california even in a, in a local area that, that wouldn't resonate elsewhere so we're we're forever learning and we've got a great team in place that really understand this the sort of zeitgeist of the sports betting space at a, a macro but also at a, glo a local level you know one yeah. other <clears throat> way i got to know your company was it i think at sbc where you published the uh the bet tech ecosystem uh report which i found interesting obviously in the area that we are in and as i recall i'm reading that uh, there was a lot of talk about LATAM, you know as a growth market you know so now you're here you start over in europe you're in the u.s how are you looking at LATAM as as far as a challenge or a growth opportunity yeah i think it's it's something that's been on our radar for a while um we as you say we our our, our main focus our two main focuses one is the UK and one is the US. We've got strong B2C brands in each in Racing Post and Pixwise, and we have really strong sportsbook B2B partnerships in the UK and significantly growing media partnerships in the US. So when we look at other, other regions, there needs to be a, a good reason for us to sort of replicate that scale. And then when it comes, comes to how do we think about the approach, there's a number of options we've we bought businesses in, in the past we bought a couple of businesses here in the uk we bought a business in the us so there's always a an acquisition an acquisition route but i think you know what one of the challenges that, that you always have with it is how do you think about really adding value when you buy a business rather than sort of buying something and bolting it on so it would need to fit in nicely um with our existing our existing um you know, UK and US business. Then there is the, um, you know, the, the, the media partnership model that, that we are operating on in in the US with the likes sort of advanced local. We have a, a significant partnership in Spain with um, 
Stockholm and that that's they have a, a presence in Latin America as well. Right. Um, so that that's the second option. And then the third is is our market's big enough to justify la- launching organically. We, we obviously launched Pixwise right. organically in the US and, and have put investment in there to grow that. But I think when you look at the potential scale of that market and how each state opens up and you can capitalize on that, it justifies the return on the investment and the you know the 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 time frame of the return. Um, and there aren't many other markets that are at that sort of level. So yeah, we, we look we look at each territory um, as a sort of standalone. Now that is it interesting to us and what's the right route to go down. But a lot of people have been looking at um, Brazil in particular, um, when when you think about LATAM and and it's a, it's the never sort of a never, never ending regulatory battle as to what that complicated, complicated. Complicated. I think complicated is it. Yeah. Yeah, They they, they don't make things easy. No, 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 that's true. Um, I I think dealing with the complexities of us state regulation has certainly kept us on our toes over the last few years. So, um, Brazil is probably yeah, another another step further than that. So um, it, it, it's on our radar, certainly. But I think mean, we're, we're very confident that there's a lot more value to go after in the UK and the US currently. Yeah. yeah especially when, especially with something like California looming. Exactly. Yeah. In, in reality, if you say, what are your next territories? There's some of those big states that we, we talked about. Yeah. <laughs> Country of California. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and I, I imagine that you know, from a, a technology perspective, you know, especially like as you mentioned, um, as we well know, the, the regulations state by state, and uh, you know, some regulations might even change w- within state. That uh, I, the, uh, you know, the focus uh, has to be on kind of like you know, ma- making sure that your technology is nimble, right, and and, and scalable. Um, well, like you mentioned, you know, earlier in the conversation, you know, there are, you know, some foundational things you can probably, you know, re- reuse from state to state uh, in the U.S., but then, right, depending on kind of the compliance and, and, uh, and the regulation issues, um, you, know, you kind of need to kind of stay nimble in that area to make, to make sure that there are no delays, right, kind of uh, opening up in, in new states. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think the, the, the more that it can be scalable, scalable across states, the better. Um, we, we don't face some of the challenges that um, sportsbook operators face in terms of you know, housing of customer data, given we, we have a slightly different affiliate model. Um, so it, it's not as cumbersome from our perspective when we're not partaking in the transaction or the bet, um, which right. is one, one of the challenges I mentioned earlier. So a lot of what we do on the tech side is scalable across you know, multiple states. Um, I think one of the one of the other really critical um, technology facets is how we operate with a distributed workforce. You know, when pre pre pandemic we had one US employee, we now have um, over forty, and so that team has formed over the course of people working in you know what is effectively 40 different offices um and i think that if you had asked me three years ago could that be done i would have said i'm sure it can but it'll be a challenge but now of of, of my my team they're based in multiple locations in the uk and they're based both east coast and west coast uh in the us so how we can make sure that we are we're all connected and we cover the full kind of gamut of um, time zones from a sports perspective is is absolutely critical as well. Yeah, yeah, that is a challenge, especially you know uh, for yourself and the team in the UK focusing on the US market. Um, you know, if you want to catch any uh, evening games, I mean, that's the middle of the night for you. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you you only work in the sports industry if you love sports. I think um, if if, yeah. if if you don't, it can be hard to justify some of the irregularities of the hours, but. Uh, it's definitely worth it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, and you know, one one question that we kind of finish things off with with uh, with everyone is uh, kind of uh, understanding your perspective or, or view on you know where uh, specifically the U.S. Uh, sports betting market is heading over the next few years. Uh, how, how do you see that 
unraveling here. <laughs> yeah, I think um, it, it, I'd have a very different answer if you asked me about other territories. It definitely depends on what stage of the maturity curve you're at. I think in a market like the US, where you know we're still only in in the second innings, um, right. despite what some you know some may tell you in terms of certain states reaching maturity. Uh, we, we we still see in the UK significant year on year growth, a sort of underlying level, um, and we've been part of the online sports betting ecosystem for over a decade. So I think that there's a long way to go. So um, you'll see slightly different dynamics in terms of states going live, and therefore the challenge of how do we acquire new players as effectively as possible. And I think that's where um, you know where, where our role as as an affiliate is really valuable in that we give give operators a, a source of highly qualified, you know, valuable customers, both for our own sites and also to our media partners. Um, but then I think increasingly as states do mature, the, the challenge is how do you retain players? How do you ensure that they are valuable um, to to you as a as a sportsbook operator? And I think that that is becoming increasingly an important part of the conversation, especially when you look at the, the seasonal nature of, of US sports. It, in the UK, we have, you know, we've got an EPL season that runs for nine to 10 months. Whereas if you've only really got three and a half months of regular season NFL, how do you ensure that people keep coming back throughout the rest of the year and justify the, you know, the significant fees that you've paid to acquire them? So I, th I think that becomes more and more important and, and therefore how can you use how can you use kind of content and, and media um to to keep them engaged and keep them coming back and and think about you know trying try and betting on other sports because it, it it enhances the the watching and the viewing experience there as well so again i think that that's where us as a business, we we've helped a lot of sports books in the UK um, in terms of integrating content and keeping players more engaged and, and informing their betting. And it's something that I expect we'll do more uh, in the states as, um, as as individual states mature. Yeah, that's actually a good point of keeping uh, you know kind of the eyeballs there. Uh, you know, after the season is over, and um, you know. It, it, from my perspective, you know, it seems like the leagues understand that too in the U.S. Like NBA, NFL, MLB. I don't know, you know, hockey if, if as much, but um, they they try to keep maintain as much of a, of a year round news cycle as possible, right? They they, they have big events around free agency, draft, um, draft. Now it's like a Super Bowl, you know. Like, you know, like my kids get excited for that. They you know, and there's betting on. It. You know, yeah, yeah, huge, huge amount. Yeah, I think I, one thing that's been really interesting looking at the US versus other markets is also the amount of focus on, you know, player specific events. I think it comes from comes from the DFS legacy, um, but it you know it feeds into the the value that that people are seeing bet on props. But yeah, the examples like the draft. People are so interested in who ends up where, and that that creates more interest out of season. It creates betting opportunities, and then it, it you know creates more excitement as you build up to the season as well. So yeah, I think the, the leagues have really have really lent in um, post the repeal of of, of past for that, and that's been a really interesting. Probably if if, if you came over from other territories um, and didn't and weren't didn't have your eyes open and your ears to the ground as to how the states would differ, then I think that would have been a, a big surprise given how, how much the, the leagues have went in. Yeah. 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 And it's just that whole thing right now where sports betting is moving away from that old, from the old racetrack sports betting to it's a, it's why it's in the media and entertainment practice of data art. It's really entertainment now. And, and these, and you talk about the prop bets, the players are now the brands that can help with the retention, you know, with, uh, and that's where the people are going to make the money, I think on the individual prop bets as they move forward. So it's that whole third screen that sports betting has become, <clears throat> I think is the biggest thing moving forward for me. And then you guys are going to play a huge role because everyone's going to have to be on it, you know, yeah. you pick wise side to keep up. Yeah. 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 No, I agree. That's great. It's been a good chat. 
Yeah, actually, one more question, and this might be totally out of left field, but um, has um, the interest in sports betting in Europe been influenced by what's going on in the state? So all the noise that's happening here, you know, um, with uh, you know, states opening up, with like the fan duels, the DraftKings, has it generated more interest in sports betting in, in Europe or you guys are okay. I, know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. Uh, anecdotally, I don't think it has. I think it's 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 obviously picked up a lot more in the in the business press, um, given mm -hmm. the big operating companies over here have various players, be it through you know acquisition or partnerships um, or you know, selling parts of their business to to casino groups in the states. So it, it's it's been of interest there. But I think in terms of the impact it's had on european sports betting volumes i think they're they're pretty um pretty distinct a, a, a lot more focus from an investment and innovation point of view is is being channeled towards the states so mm -hmm. whether it has a detrimental effect to more mature markets if it's the same businesses working out where to allocate their capital then it may do but in terms of the average um kind of you know better on the street i uh, I think a lot of them are surprised when I speak to friends and family that betting wasn't online betting wasn't legal in the States before, to be honest. I, I didn't think, you know, I don't think people were even aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. I, I was just curious to see how much noise, uh, I'll, you know, if any of the noise we're making here is, uh, uh, yeah, know, yeah. Uh, being well, heard that's, 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 that's only my anecdotal view. So I, I reserve the right to be completely wrong. All right. Uh, well, this has been a good chat, Russell. We really appreciate yeah. all your time. I know you're busy with uh, <laughs> watching lots of brands, and and it's really good to get to know your company a little bit more. Uh, yeah, no, and, really, yeah. really good. Good to chat, and appreciate yeah. the uh, the invitation to uh, to come on. So yeah, really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, excellent. All right, thanks a lot, Harry, and you know we'll hopefully speak to you again soon. Yeah, sounds great. Thanks, guys. All right. Cheers. Take care. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.